Summer break at Kenyon College in Ohio. Peaceful and quiet, no hint of the firestorm of a few years ago when the Dean of Admissions said the unthinkable. College girls are doing a lot better than boys. Gender politics are alive and well in this country, let there be no doubt. Dean Jennifer Delahunty laid it all out in a 2006 opinion piece in the New York Times, exposing the widening gap in achievement. There's a kind of, you know, I, the, the anti-intellectualism of young men, that really bothers me, that it's not cool to be smart, that it's not cool to be engaged, um, that it's not cool to do your homework, that bothers me. Not only do they not enroll in college at the same rate as women, they don't graduate from college at the same rate, they don't retain at the same rate. The numbers don't lie. Male college enrollment has been sliding for more than four decades, and it's expected to just get worse. So people are worried, like, where are the boys going? Are they disappearing? Why are they failing? There's a, you know, there's a whole boys crisis uh, sort of uh, conversation. Sociologist Michael Kimmel is the go-to guy when it comes to guys. You know, 25 years ago when I started, I would ask the women in my classes, what does it mean to be a woman? And they would say, well, you have to be nice and pretty and smart and smile a lot. And you ask them now, and you know what they say? I can be anything I want. I can do anything. And you ask the guys, you know, what does it mean to be a man 25 years ago? John Wayne. Now, Arnold. Hasta la vista, baby. Boys aren't saying hasta la vista to these outdated he-man ideas. But sadly, many are saying it to education. Boys think that academic disengagement is a sign of masculinity. The less you can do in school, the less connected you are, the less interested you are, the more manly you are. Which may explain why about 70% of valedictorians today are girls. And it's not just about grades, it's about jobs. The, the economy is shifting to a service economy, a knowledge-based economy, a words-based economy rather than an action-based economy has certainly been to the detriment of that traditional ideology of masculinity. And those men who most su strongly subscribe to it are those men who are going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. In a stunning role reversal, a new study finds that young women today value high-paying careers more than young men do. And should there be some sort of overt affirmative action, if you will, for boys? No, I don't think that that's not the answer. The answer is to look at this problem systemically. I don't, I don't believe in affirmative action for men in higher education. But in her divisive op-ed piece, Della Hunty hinted it's happening anyway. She wrote, the reality is that because young men are rarer, they are more valued applicants. And she apologized to girls who'd been rejected because of demographic realities. I think that you know, the idea of an affirmative action program for men is engaged in by a lot of college admissions offices these days because they're worried that the women are much better qualified. Now they do this sometimes by infrastructure, which is to say they build a new athletic facility. They build a new student center with lots of pool tables and video games. In other words, they, they sort of say, and guys who come on college tour goes, well, this is cool, I could go here, right? So that's an affirmative action program where they spend money on that rather than on other things. But hang on here. In a country where women get paid roughly 82 cents for every dollar a man earns, how much help do guys really need? Are they in crisis or are they just in transition to a new definition of what it really means to be a man? I think that masculinity is more flexible than we give it credit for. I think that, that our ideas of what's masculine change. In her recent book, The Richer Sex, journalist Liza Mundy argues that with new challenges have come greater opportunities for men, and they have women to thank. Overall, I think that for women, you know, to contribute economically is a good thing for men. It gives men within marriage um, more choices. They don't necessarily have to go into a career they're not interested in just to be the, the breadwinner, just to be the wage earner. They're not going to be judged simply on their ability to generate a salary. Oh, you have to throw it the right way. You have to throw it the right way. Case in point, New Yorker Matt Schneider, who dropped his career some years ago to stay at home and care for his two sons while his wife is at the office.
To me, this is a great time to be a man because we've opened up the definition of what a man can be. It's no longer you are the paycheck for your family. You also get to uh, help make meals and change diapers and go to school functions and all of this. So to me, it's great that we're expanding the definition of a man. In fact, the number of stay-at-home fathers is on the rise, more than double what it was in 1994. Schneider even founded a support group for them. There's an expectation that we're going to fit into a certain mold. So what mold is that? Breadwinner. But to kind of go to the other direction and say, I'm not going to be a career person, I'm going to stay at home with my kids full time, seems to be some kind of monumental decision for a lot of people. But Schneider, a former teacher, doesn't think that dropping the old stereotypes somehow will magically end the struggles of boys, especially in school. But why do you think this discrepancy exists in education? Our schools have been geared towards kids who can sit still for long periods of time, who can focus on a subject for long periods of time. And those are all good things, but especially for young boys, to sit still for more than 10 minutes isn't a reasonable expectation. What do we reward in the K-12 system? We reward self-control, communication, verbal and written communication, um, expressiveness. These are all qualities that girls are really good at. That's a big reason Dean Delahunty wrote her op-ed, hoping to focus national attention on the plight of boys as we all try to sort our way through society's rapidly changing roles. This piece is going to air on Father's Day. Mm. What are your thoughts about all this in that context? Well, if I were going to speak to the fathers of high school boys, I would say teach them honor, self-management, responsibility, model it for them. Forget boys will be boys. Forget, yes, let's throw boys will be boys out the door. It doesn't serve us anymore.